move this into the middle if that's permitted and nobody will mind me doing that, I hope. If you do mind, it's too late because I've done it anyway. So please forgive me. Look, it is good to be here with you this morning and let me just pause to pray. Lord, as we turn to your word, I pray that you might speak to us. Where we are discouraged, Lord, encourage us. Where we are confused, give us clarity. Where we are fearful, give us courage. And where we need to know your way, give us purpose and direction. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, it is May Mission Month and um, it's my privilege to be with you as part of Baptist Mission Australia and part of the Global Outback team. The theme of May Mission Month has been crossing the street. Um, and the idea is that mission is about getting out of where we are, going to where the people are, and both being and doing and saying the good news of Jesus to them in word and deed. And so I want to speak to you this morning from this little passage in Luke chapter 10. It's a very, very well-known passage. And I want to make just a few simple points from this passage uh, about our mission because it's not just folk in central Australia like Matt and Shannon Anderson or people uh, in Kazakhstan or Malawi or Mozambique or anywhere else who are part of Baptist Mission Australia who are on mission. If we know Jesus, we are also to be on mission. I've already heard something of that this morning with Jason going north to Lismore and, and uh, Amy inviting her uh, friends uh, to that women's event. The other day, last week, Rhonda and I, my wife and I, went um, out for the, just a bit of a day off. And on the way back, she had to, well, when we went back, she had to go to a medical appointment. And we were driving off to get to that medical appointment. And we stopped off at McDonald's. Now, I'm not a great fan of McDonald's, but there are sometimes some, some facilities in McDonald's that I use. And I popped into, uh, got out of the car and I popped into McDonald's. Um, and while I was there, there was a man standing there looking very confused. It's been raining on and off in Sydney like it has in Lismore, like not quite as bad for months, and it was a very overcast day, but there was a bit of sun this day, and he was just standing there. He had a long, unkempt beard, long grey hair. His trousers were ripped. He had bare feet, and this was in the middle of um, Tarrant Point in Sydney, a very uh, industrial area. And he looked confused. He was standing there, and then he'd move away, and then he'd stand looking in at McDonald's, then he'd stand away. And I, I said to Rhonda, I wonder if he's okay. But we were in a bit of a hurry. And I went into McDonald's, came out again a few minutes later, I couldn't see where he was, and I sat down in the car and I said to Rhonda, I ought to go and ask how he's going. And we said, well, yeah, but I've got to get to this medical appointment. So we had to also then go to the shops and get something on the way to the medical appointment. And I said, what if we, she said, what if we come back via this way and if he's still here, we'll go and ask if he's okay. He looked confused. He looked lonely. He looked hungry. We went and got our shopping done, drove back, deliberately back via McDonald's, could no longer see him and drove off. And the thought was in my mind, I should have gone the first time and asked him if he was okay. We didn't see him again. I failed to, as it were, cross the street. I failed to connect and engage. And in this story, there are three people, two of whom didn't cross the street, one of whom did. That's a very, very well-known story, isn't it? A man comes up to Jesus and he's got a self-interested question that he asks of Jesus. He says, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, that in itself is a good question. How can I get to go to be with God forever? And Jesus gives him a simple answer. It's not um, a bad question to ask. It's a very, very good question to ask. None of us are getting any younger. I'm certainly getting a lot older. Um, and I get up in the morning and I've got to get myself going again. Um, we all face God at some point in our life. What must I do to inherit eternal life? It's a great question. And he asks that question of Jesus and Jesus says very, very, two very simple things. He says, love God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. And he asks the man, what's the law say? And the man says, well, we've got to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and we've got to love our neighbour as ourselves." And Jesus says, you've answered well. 
Man, of course, then is trying to justify, well, I'm, who's my neighbour? He was, as a good Jewish uh, leader, religious leader, he had the idea that the neighbour was those who were part of his community, those who were similar to him, those who perhaps held on to uh, his uh, views. And he was saying, well, who's my neighbour? Who have I got to help? Where are the limits where I don't have to go across the street beyond this point? Where are the limits, Jesus? And then Jesus tells this story that we're all familiar with, the story of the Good Samaritan. And from this story, I want to pick up four very, very simple points about us crossing the street in mission, whether we're in Batemans Bay or me at Menai in Sydney or in Central Australia in Uendamu or Kal Karinji or Lajamanu or Ali Karang or any of the other little communities where our Baptist mission agencies work. The first point is this, that when um, that, that Jesus, first of all, indicates that this man needed to go beyond himself. In other words, when Jesus speaks, when, when uh, the two commandments that the man quotes back to Jesus, the first com- commandment is to love God, vertical. But the second commandment is that that's no good in itself. We've got to then demonstrate that by loving our neighbour. I love that song that we just sang then. Uh, It took me back a few years. Uh, A new commandment, Jesus says, is that we've got to love each other, but not just each other. The scripture says we've got to love our neighbour, and the way that it describes neighbour is anybody in need. But then it says we've got to love our enemies, even those who are completely different to us. Imagine being in Ukraine at the moment when the Russians are doing that terrible invasion and cruelty, and it says we've got to even love our enemies. So the the first point about being on mission is that we've got to go beyond ourselves. The second thing, however, in this story is that when when Jesus then tells this story about who is the neighbour, he tells the story of three people. Two of them don't cross the street. They stay on their side of the road. They're careful to protect their own Uh, religious purity. One is a priest, one's a Levite. Both of them were religious leaders. And they were concerned that if they went to this man who could have been dead, he was probably broken and bleeding by the side of the road, on the other side of the road, it literally says that they went by on the other side. But the third man, of course, the Samaritan who wasn't even a Jew, and the Jews and the Samaritans were, as you very well know, at odds with each other. That man literally crosses the street. The first two didn't cross the street because they were afraid either perhaps of the other robbers, maybe they were still in the area up in the hills, or they were going to be ritually unclean by touching uh, a, a potential dead body. And so they left the man there. They failed to cross the street. But the second point that I'd, so the second point that I'd make uh, from this story about us crossing the street is not only must we decide to go beyond ourselves to our neighbour, but we've got to embody that in, we, we, sorry, we've got to get our hands dirty. Now, I'm using that metaphorically. Some of you, when the fires came through years ago, those years ago, you literally did get your hands dirty, didn't you? With the soot and the dust and the grime, and that must have been an awful time. Jason, you got your hands literally dirty in the mud of Lismore. We got our hands dirty with the dust of Central Australia over Easter. This man literally got his, his hands dirty in the blood and the dust on the man by the side of the road. And we've got to be prepared if we're going to be on mission, if we're going to cross the street, to get be prepared to get our hands dirty physically sometimes, but metaphorically sometimes. Get involved in things that are unpleasant. I suspect it wasn't much fun in Lismore, Jason. It was discouraging perhaps and depressing and hard work. It wasn't always fun in Central Australia. And sometimes we're going to be asked to go into uncomfortable places in our community with people whose values and views we don't agree with. But we've got to be prepared, if we're going to be on mission, to get our hands dirty, like Matt and Shannon in Central Australia, whose house, just two years after that, one year after they were there, whose house was completely trashed, $200,000 to repair it. They had to go and live back in Alice Springs again. Now they're back living in that community again got their hands dirty. 
the first thing, we need to go beyond ourselves. Secondly, if we're going to be on mission like Matt and Shannon or any of us uh, who follow Jesus, we've got to be prepared to get our hands dirty sometimes out of our comfort zone. But the third thing that I learned from this story is that the Samaritan crossed the street, crossed the road, he got his hands dirty, he went beyond himself. But thirdly, what did, what did he do? He embodied that, he embodied the mission in his own life. What do I mean by that? Well, he shared the gifts that he had. He put the man on his donkey. He didn't just feel for the person. He actually did something about it. He got involved. But he embodied it in his life. He practiced. He demonstrated in who he was what uh, the love of God really meant. And we need to do that, don't we? If we're going to be on mission, we've got to actually embody in ourselves the love of God for other people prepared to get our hands dirty, using our own resources. Wonderful that you've raised, three th uh, what was it, $3,000 for the cancer. Uh, that 300. 300. Well, that's still pretty good. But you've given $3,000 to Lismore, was it, last year? Wonderful. Embodying the love of God when you helped people in the fires all those uh, for weeks and months and months, uh, you know, three years ago. Embodying the message of God. People won't believe... Um, People won't care what we believe until they believe that we actually care. That's what mission uh, is about. So going beyond ourselves, getting our hands dirty, embodying uh, in who we are and what we say the message of Jesus. But the fourth and final thing about crossing the street is that we need to do it together. Mission in Central Australia would not happen. Matt and Shannon could not do what they do without partnership. What does this man do in the story? Well, he uses what he's got. Um, one joking way of looking at this, he partners with the donkey first of all, doesn't he? he? He puts the man on his own donkey and he leads the donkey with the man draped over the donkey until they get to the inn. He's using his own resources. But he's, in a sense, partnering with what he's got. When he gets to the inn, what does he do? He partners with the innkeeper. He uses his resources also. He pays the innkeeper and says, when I come back, let me know if there's any more expense and I will repay you. Partnership is the way to go about mission. Um, you partner together with Matt and Shannon and Danny and Beth and Mark and myself by supporting the work of Baptist Mission Australia. A mission organisation could not do what it does if it wasn't for your partnership. So again, thank you. But you partner with each other in reaching out to the Batemans Bay community with the good news of Christ in word and deed. You do it best together. You cross the street together. What did Jesus do when he sent out his disciples to speak to the villagers? Did he send them out one by one? He sent them out two by two. I think there are three good reasons why we need to do this mission work together whether it's the practical mission work that Jason's done up there, just being with people and listening and caring for them, whether it's actually speaking out the gospel to somebody, whatever the form of mission takes, I think there are three good reasons. The first reason is this, that we um, are able to multiply the resources that we've got. You can give financially or perhaps some of you even go and do some things that provide resources to Matt and Shannon. Matt and Shannon bring their gifts, living in community, and they are resourced and supported by churches around Australia. We multiply our resources when we do things together. Secondly, I think we need to go together across the street because each of us have different gifts and different capacities and different abilities. Some people are great at speaking. Some people are great at practical things. Matt and Shannon have particular gifts to go to the Indigenous people Matt uh, has Indigenous uh, heritage in his own family. So he has particular gifts that help him to understand those communities. We all have different gifts. What's your gift? What's your capacity? It's probably different to mine and mine is different to yours, but together we not only multiply our resources, but we multiply our gifts when we use the gifts that each of us have. The third reason I think why it's best to cross the street together because we need the encouragement and support of each other. Mission work is not easy. Is it easy speaking about Jesus to your neighbours in our community when often um, the church is looked down upon or the message of the Bible is devalued 
or people don't particularly want to hear, is it easy to speak out the love of Christ in these days? It can be encouraging, but sometimes there are setbacks. You've worked for 10 years with the women's uh, thing, and sometimes it's not been easy, and we can get discouraged. Matt and Shannon certainly have had very low times in Central Australia, and we need each other to stay on course and to stay encouraged. I like the way that you speak about the church as a family. That's biblical. But families are needed and they work well to support each other. My wife at the moment, um, she would have been here today actually, but uh, she's, um, she's injured her hip or something and so she's got these terrible sciatic pains that made it very hard for her to sit in the car for uh, some hours and so she wasn't here this morning. Uh, and hopefully I'm supporting her and hopefully when I'm not so well, she supports me as well. Families support each other, don't they? We babysit our grandkids. Uh, we sometimes supply finances for family members if they're not doing so well. Families, when they work well, care for and support each other. But families also, when they work well, embrace other people into the family. So let's not get comfortable just with our own family because we want to see other new members added because that's what mission is about. Well, crossing the street together. We need to go beyond ourselves, love our neighbour as we love ourselves. We need to be prepared to get our hands dirty. We need to embody the truth of the gospel, not only in our words, but in our actions. And finally, we need to go on mission together. Matt and Shannon are doing those things in Central Australia, and I know that you're doing those things here, and I pray that you'll be able to continue doing that even as you go on your pastoral search. And I pray that the right person is appointed to lead the congregation here. On Friday, or yesterday actually, um, my wife uh, was out at her Pilates class trying to get things going again. Um, uh, I do Pilates, by the way, and it's great. But um, uh, I, she sent me on, uh, a, a, she gave me a job to do. I had to go to Coles to get some shopping. So as I came out from Coles to go and meet her and then we're going off to see our grandchildren, I saw somebody sitting by the side of the road like this. Um, she had her eyes closed. She didn't look happy at all. And I, this time I stopped and I said, are you okay? And she said, yes, I am okay. Nothing came of that. Um, she, but she didn't look happy. But at least this time I crossed the street when I was prompted to by the Spirit and asked her, are you okay? Let's listen for the voice of the Spirit of God, that when he prompts us to cross the street, whether it's literally or metaphorically, whether it's crossing the street to our neighbour that we know of for years or a stranger that we meet or crossing the street to pray for Matt and Shannon in Central Australia or other mission organisations that you're involved in. Let's listen to the prompting of the Spirit and be prepared to get out of our comfort zone to get our hands dirty, to embody the gospel message in word and deed, to do it with other people so we stay encouraged and empowered and so our resources are multiplied. May God continue to bless you and guide you as you do that here in Batemans Bay, but then around Australia as well through Baptist Mission Australia. So thanks, folks. Can I pray for you? Okay.